गायल सी माय लोकल ऑल यू इट माय लोकल बिजनेस माय लोकल कम्युनिटी माय लोकल कल्चर माय कंट्री गायल सी माय लोकल ऑल यू इट She is revered by friends and family as the pastel queen of the West. Her surname sounds familiar, doesn't it? Well, she is the mother of singing sensation Kes Defentala. So, as you can see, there are many layers to this multifaceted family. Owner of a small business called Mariposa Catering Service, she's a culinary artist, and one of her specialties is pastel. But this she has been making since childhood. I have made pastels commercially about um, 12 years. You know, but prior to that, it was a normal thing at my house, at home. When we were small, we always had pastels, and we always worked, you know, to help to make the pasta. Why do Trinidadians crave this dish at Christmas time? Mrs. Defentala explains. Well, it, I think it is tradition. It's just that. Um, the Spanish influence and people like it just because of that. It's been around, I mean, ever since, you know, we had all the Spanish people coming here and, you know, that it's a long time now, many years, and it has become a tradition and I think this is why people um, feel there's no Christmas without pasta. Pasta is usually filled with pork or beef, but this is not a hard and fast rule. No, you can um, use chicken. Because some people, you know, are not into the red meat and the pork and so on. The original thing was it was um, beef and pork. But as the time went by and people changed their eating habits, some wanted beef alone, some didn't want beef at all. So they'd have, they'd want chicken. And then there are those who are vegetarians and they'd have, I do soya, but you have people doing moody and lentils and chana and all sorts of things. So. But I use soya for the vegetarian. Though a popular dish during this Yuletide season, there are those who partake of the delicacy throughout the year. There are people who like to have pastels all the time. So I would make I make pastels like every month, two or three times every month. Because there are people who would find that it's an easy thing. You get home, you know, you do a quick something with a salad and that's it. So I, I sell all during the year. Now, we showed you how to make homemade wine and sal roti on a chulha. So it would be remiss of me not to show you how to make pastels. This is um, brown beef and pork. Okay, this is what has already been cooked. But these are the ingredients that I use. Um, a lot of saif, pimentos, um, garlic. Well, hot pepper I'd put. Some people like pepper, some people don't. So of course, you know, you have to do it according to the order. And um, the usual salt and sugar and things like that that you give to your taste. And uh, like Creole seasoning, the um, Spanish thyme, and, you know, French thyme, the oregano and all of that. So you'd grind all of that and you'd put it in the meat. Then we have the corn. The times have surely changed. Today, one can just run to the grocery store and buy ground corn. Long ago, however, you had to prepare your corn from scratch. This is the corn that is prepared. It's the skin is taken off and the eyes are taken off. There's the white one and the yellow, so you, sometimes you mix the two to get that, um, well, the color, it's just the color, to be a lighter yellow. This is what they use long ago, and this is what they still use in Venezuela. A coffee mill is normally used to grind the corn. I put this as well the water. Now it's not necessary. Some people feel that you have to put this oil in hot water. It's not necessary. We're now adding the cornmeal to it. And um, well, I add it until it's of a consistency for kneading. This here now it would be the consistency that you'd want it to get to. Okay? Consistency that you can um, boil it easily. I'm dipping it in here in a little oil. Now, this is how we did it long ago when we did not have a press. You would um, press it out like this. Okay. That's how it will, will press it out. Okay. But now, with the advent of the press, you press it down like this. 
No, it's still, you know, smooth it out a bit. Then it is time for the zesty pork and beef. It is at this junction, three important ingredients are added. These are the ingredients put in at last. The olives, raisins, and capers. The caper is a plant. It's a um, preserved bud of, of, of the caper. And it's um, preserved in, in um, vinegar. Take some raisins. Yeah, take some raisins, put raisins and um, olives and a few capers, okay? The pastel is then folded in the form of an envelope. First, first fold the first part and then the two sides and then this piece. You may have noticed she does not use foil to wrap her pastels. In her opinion, you don't interfere with perfection. It has a particular flavor. You know, especially when you singe it, the little smoky taste, you know, it gives it a nice little country taste, which is what you want to maintain that country taste. I agree. Some people boil their pastels. Mrs. Diffentala steams hers. She says there are those who still tie their pastels with either thread or some other form of string. But for her, wax paper holds it together well for steaming purposes. Her father introduced them to the idea for it prevents water from entering the pastels. After this is done, it is time to steam it and after a few minutes... This is your finished product. Eat and enjoy. Gaya Z, my local all the way. My local business. My local community. My local quality. My country. Guy and see, my local all the way.